Hello everybody, my name is Dimitrios and this is a video presentation for Mika 2020 on Domain Aware Medical Image Classifier Interpretation by Counterfactual Impact Analysis that I will give together with my colleague David Mayo. We are part of the Biomedical Image Informatics Research Group at ViaVis and also an institute for application and research in visual computing, part of one of the largest research clusters in Europe focusing on computer graphics. But enough self-promotion, what are we addressing? For all the progress and promise enabled by deep learning-based computer-assisted classification of medical images, some key questions still linger. In a typical inference setup, we input some images into a network that in return responds with some probability-like values, which we as a community are used to. But can practitioners interpret them correctly and trust them? Are even well-calibrated network output probabilities enough information for end users? In practice, consulting radiologists pinpoint and describe specific regions on a radiograph to back their findings, thereby providing a comprehensive interpretation of their work. Since neural networks do not induce a canonical mapping between the prediction and the input image, can we give an approximation instead whose validity we can test and quantify? A plethora of approaches have been presented addressing these issues, which we can partition crudely into classes where direct approaches utilize the assumed analytic nature and architecture of a network, reference-based methods considered as a black box. They assess the region's influence by counterfactual reasoning. How would the prediction change if the region's information would be missing? However, both fall short when introduced into radiology workflows directly. Direct approaches typically yield coarse and imprecise results. Here, demonstrated from mammography on the bottom left. Also, recent work shows they are at times misleading. Reference-based approaches usually utilize heuristic methodology for information marginalization, which might introduce undesired evidence for pathology or other biasing artifacts. As an example, we demonstrate two established methods, namely neighborhood condition sampling and the very popular Gaussian blurring for mammography tissue. As shown at the bottom right, the result should not be considered anatomically sound and healthy. Lastly, we depict one of the few approaches that has been directly developed for, for medical images. The locally acting but globally conditioned partial convolution in painting overcomes out of distribution issues. Working iteratively, like most reference based approaches, however, it cannot be used in time restricted environments. To solve these issues, we introduce a resource efficient, reference based, faithful, and informative attribution method. For a given classifier, we exploit the domain-aware marginalization achieved with partial convolutions and present a specialized network capable of deriving the desired attribution map in a single forward pass. We show the suitability of our approach for radiology, compare with popular state-of-the-art work, and demonstrate time efficiency and generalizability. So how does it work? We start from a frozen deep learning classifier. Typically, such a network consists of an encoding and a subset classification path. Interpreting image encoding as a downsampling path, we propose a unit inspired architecture. Our expanding path consists of initial feature attenuation and subsequent repeated upsampling, convolving, and merging with corresponding attention gate weighted features. Once input resolution is reached, a final mapping module derives the desired localization. Through SGD training, the network learns to crudely localize the pathology within the attenuation model and to refine its attribution subsequently during upsampling. Applying binarization and smooth maximum convolution with the caution kernel finally yields a desired attribution map. Together with the input image, where we mask the attributed regions to exclude any bias, we feed this map into the trained marginalization network. This module derives an imprinted version of the original input where we can assume that the altered regions now depict healthy pixel representations. For training, we feed this so altered image into the classifier and derive a new pathology score. If marginalization works correctly, this new score should be equal or lower. We can use this fact to assemble a target function that balances between the reference and the newly derived score. We train the network by minimizing this function. In order to enforce a clear understanding of what this attribution map depicts, we consider boundary conditions like attribution area during this training. So how does marginalization work? It has the task to replace attributed image regions with healthy tissue in an anatomically correct way. To solve this task, we chose the unit-like architecture with partial convolution presented by Liu et al. This network takes as input the masked image and the binarized map and yields an impainted image. 
It utilizes partial convolution, which considers only unmasked inputs in a sliding window to compute its output. The method can handle irregular whole masks, which are likely during attribution training. It uses a composite loss function, which balances different components. It emphasizes local context by per pixel losses and considers global joint region interaction by perceptual and style losses and thus favors globally sound anatomy. An additional total variation component ensures smooth transition between missing and present image regions. As next, let's take a look at our experiment setup. For mammography, we took the CVS DDSM set with pixel-wise ground truth and augmented it with healthy samples of the DDSM dataset. The mobile net binary classifier was applied for mass and healthy classification. The marginalization network was trained by healthy scans with arbitrarily generated whole masks to mimic intermediate stages of the attribution training. The attribution network training utilized only mass scans. Moreover, we applied our method on a private chest X-ray dataset, which had no pixel-wise ground truth. The DenseNet 121 classifier was used for tuberculosis and healthy classification. The setup of the marginalization and attribution followed here, that of the mammography part. As, as a first step, we evaluated the suitability of the marginalization technique. Visual inspection shows anatomically correct healthy texture replacements at pathological spots for both mammography and chest X-ray scans as visible in the red boxes of the images. Moreover, different rock curves were compared. For reference, we computed the original classifier's rock curve, which you see here in green. We then randomly replaced image regions on healthy images and repeated this experiment 10 times. Results are depicted in blue with mean and standard deviation. We compared it against random replacements in pathology depicting images where replacements were made at pathological regions. It was repeated 10 times as it, and is shown in red. These experiments show that the technique meets our demands. Significant deviation is visible only when marginalizing pathological tissue. The curves of healthy replacements follow the reference curve for both mammography and chest X-ray. Now let's take a look at the attribution quality. If we compare our results to attribution maps of state-of-the-art, such as GradCam and Saliency visually, it is apparent that our maps are more compact and focused around ground truth. Let's continue with quantitative results where pixel-wise ground truth was available. As already mentioned, we compared our method with two, two popular approaches, GradCam and Saliency. In order to do so, we thresholded and binarized the methods resulting images by the 50th, 75th, and 90th percentiles of their respective values. We checked statistical significance using the Wilcoxon signed rank test. As first, we evaluated the Hausdorff distances between ground truth and the result maps. As visible in our table, we compare favorably in all cases and percentiles, showing better proximity to ground truth. Moreover, we measured weak localization performance where a mass detection is counted as found if the overlap between the result map and the ground truth is larger than 0.125. We chose this threshold based on medical fact that border regions determine the presence of a mass. Again, we compare favorably in all cases and percentiles to state of the art. For estimating the compactness of our result maps and to compare them to state of the art, we computed the ratio between the result mask and the organ area of pixels. It is visible in the bottom tables that our result maps are more compact than those of state of the art for both mammography and chest X-ray. Last but not least, we evaluated the time efficiency of our attribution network for mammography by measuring throughput over 10 repeated runs on the GPU. Our method is capable of deriving 75 mammography maps per second, which is by a large margin better than state of the art. Concluding our quantitative evaluations, our method yields smaller, more precise, and hence informative attribution maps compared to state of the art without sacrificing computational efficiency. Here are the references used in this presentation. We thank the funding agencies for their support and our project partner, Aqua Healthcare, for their input. Thank you for your, for your attention.